Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on InRange TV. We are doing another official InRange stamp of hubris certification of a part from our What Would Stoner Do rifles. Yep. And today it is the charging handle. So you might be wondering, it's the freaking charging handle. That seems kind of stupid. Uh, yeah, how important can that be? Well, there is a little bit going on with the charging handle. Um, the biggest obvious thing is one of our goals on these rifles is complete ambidextrous. Yes. Mm. Ambidextrosity. Ambidexterity. That one. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and the charging handle is one of those parts on the standard AR that's not entirely ambidextrous. Now, if you use two fingers and a hook, not bad, and that's fine. However, when you get to modernized rifles that have optics on them, that's not necessarily something you can conveniently do all the time. As so. well as if you're running night vision or other things, there are things that can get above and ab uh, uh, essentially above where the charging handle is. Right. And we were doing this with you, and this is more, I think you should talk to this more than I should. Mm -hmm. We were timing you, and the reality was the charging handle being in its standard guise was affecting you negatively. Yeah. Yeah, it really does stand to have some improvement. Okay. So, um, there's an interesting history on the charging handles on AR-15s, yeah. so of course. The original ones, originally an AR-15 did not have a carry handle. It had a charging handle protective shield yep. that happens to double as a carry handle because originally you had a uh, little trigger-shaped hook coming right up out of the top of the upper receiver and uh, that was connected to the bolt and that was your charging And handle. that would have been ambi. It totally ambi. Yeah, yeah, it absolutely was. Actually, you know, when you look at the German G36, similar in mindset. It's above yeah. the top of the receiver, but it happened to be a trigger instead of a little lever. Right. But it's still above there, and you grab it and pull it back like this. Yeah. yeah. So if you look at the original Armalite AR-10s, you'll find that style of charging handle. Um, that was what they originally used on the AR-15, but they pretty quickly abandoned it. Why? Do you know? Yes. Uh, the primary reason was it got too hot. That oh, that makes... was like directly connected to uh, bits of the gas block. And yeah, if you dumped a couple mags, that charging handle got really uncomfortably hot quite fast. As we know, the AR-15 being a semi-DI system, right. the heat generation point is where the gas exits, and yeah. the gas exits right here, yep. which is into the bolt carrier group, and that would exactly where be the charging handle. Yeah. So you're right, that yep. would get hot. So that was actually one of the things that, uh, one of the early redesigns was to add this rear hook charging handle to the gun. Okay. Uh, which is, it's interesting in that that is a, a pretty, kind of a unique aspect to the AR-15 design. There are a number of weird unique aspects to the AR-15 that we've gotten accustomed to because the AR is such a commonplace rifle now, but there aren't a whole lot of other guns that work. That was a like unique that. system and it was actually, it turned out that it was really a workaround. Yeah. It was like, how do we fix this heat problem? Well, we'll just put it back here. And how do we do it without having to redesign a lot of the rest of the gun? Now, you're seeing the one that we've standardized on here, but in that regard, the original charging handle design, when it's in its extended state, this is actually not the best thing. It's not all that strong. This can get bent, yep. especially when it's aluminum or a low price manufacturer. Yep. I've seen them get bent. I've yep. even seen them break. Huh. Can be done. Um, and and the little grasping point or the latch that holds it into place is generally quite small. Yep. And we've seen stuff over time in which people have tried to uh, modernize and or improve the charging handle for varying degrees of success. The most simplistic one is they just make the actual latch much bigger. Right. And it gives you more purchase. Yep. And it gives you more mechanical advantage of unlocking it to use it. And also, we can see them improve it where they turn it into steel yep. to make it stronger. All those things make sense. And we've, we've tried some of that, too, on these rifles. We have. We've gone through iterations of this, and we're not going to talk about all the iterations we went through because that's not the one we standardized on. Right. But, for example, one of the things, and I think it was a hard as hell, we were on one of the other ones than this one. One of the guns <laughs> had this one, and one of the guns had a, uh, an enlarged one, which from yep. a different manufacturer doesn't matter. Um, nothing wrong with the product, except... When you start doing stuff like running around with load-bearing vests and armor on and gear or throwing it on your back to climb up a ladder, well, one, that crap hurts. Yes, it does. If you have armor on, it doesn't. But if you don't have armor on, it, it kind of hurts. That thing jams you good and hard. Yeah. And when you're running around, you'll find that sometimes you'll actually unlatch the charging handle because that big old latch that's on there now gets hooked up on everything. Really easy to catch on stuff, yeah. And at some point I even went, wow, there are advantages of this improved charging handle in terms of strength and rigidity, uh, and it's much easier to get a hold of it in terms of times on the clock. Mm -hmm. But I actually went back to the original standard one because I was getting tired of getting slammed with it, and yep. I was also getting very tired of it getting hooked up on everything. Yep. And finding that my gun's sort of half in battery until I let go of whatever it's latched onto. It took us a while to actually find the one that we really liked. It, it did, and we tried a couple different ones, and we started looking around, and I, and I found this one, which is the Geisley Super Charging Handle. Dumbest name ever. It sounds like it came out of a Super <laughs> Mario Brothers game. Um, and it looks 
bizarre. Um, Looks a little gamey. It really does. It's kind of got this like bat wing shape to it. And nice and gold. Well, you can get it also in standard black. We happen to get those. These were easier to find in the bronze or the sand, I think they call it. And so we got that one. These we bought directly. Yep. These were not given to us by any stretch of the yeah, imagination. Screw Geisley. They're, I actually, I don't think we even asked them. We never we even bothered. We just bought them. them. By the way, yeah. they're, they're stupid expensive for what yeah. a charging handle is. They're like 90 bucks. Yeah. Okay, got it. You may not want to do this. Some of the things we're doing with the What Would Stoner Do project are nuance. Yes. They're improvements that aren't required. Right. However, we'd recommend that you follow it as close as you can if you want this build. And we found advantages to this, and that's the reason we've standardized on it. One, it's truly ambi. There's a handle on the left and the right that both unlatch the system. Yep, they are connected. The spring cam mechanism is connected to the two. So you don't have to pull just the left one. So people on film or watching don't freak out. We are clear, correct? Yep. yep. So I'm going to close the bolt. And you can do cool stuff. You can try pull it from the right. You can pull it from the left. You can pull it with two hands. Two fingers. You could do anything in that regard. However, because it's Geisley, it's slick as snot. This thing it's, is incredibly smooth. It's hard to really believe how much nicer the rifle can feel with a really good charging handle until you actually try it. It sounds bizarrely it, stupid. It really does. It's like, yeah. get the Gucci bag. But this is the Gucci charging handle. Yeah. We handed it to a guy at the two-gun match. There's one of the guys that's a new shooter. Mm -hmm. And he... He's brand new. Mm -hmm. He finds charging the AR a little challenging, quite honestly, because it's an unusual and movement. It's a weird and skill. And I hand him this, and he's like, oh, that was literally his reaction. Yeah. But it was because it made it so much easier to deal with, which is strange, but true. Yeah. Um, the ambi part's important. Uh, the other thing is, because of the way they, I'm sorry, they designed this bat wing. Yeah, there's some nuance in that. It's, it's not just a random, it's not done so that it looks cool. It's done because it actually really does minimize the likelihood of catching something and opening the charging handle. First of all, the throw required to unlock it is a little bit greater. Mm -hmm. So it takes a little more effort, into, not effort, but it has to move a little further before it unlocks. Right, you have to rotate those things down a little more. A little more, just a little. But this angle seems to, surprisingly, and you would look at it and not think so, but in our experience running around with this on the clock, it does not catch on stuff like right. those extendo charging handles. Do. It'll hook on something maybe, but it pops right off it without actually activating uh, the charging handle. And so besides being stronger, and feeling good, it actually effectively is ambidextrous and uh, it does not latch or catch on things like the others do. And it's got less of a pointy edge sticking out to hit on you. Um, and it actually also has some suppression. Well, it has it has a little gas block. Yep. yep. So the, you can find this on a lot of aftermarket charging handles. The original GI ones don't have this. You can add little, there are ways to hack the original GI charging handle where you add some sealant here to try and deal with it. What you're trying to do here is the AR, because it is semi-DI, in some systems you'll get gas blow by. Right. It goes by the charging handle. It goes right into your friggin' eyeball. When you are behind this, guess where the leak is? Boop, boop, right here. Right there. Now, yeah. some guns do it, some don't. Suppressed guns do it far worse than unsuppressed right. guns. We have a lot of stuff coming about suppression, which is a whole other conversation. But this one has this little kind of like guard here, this little cup. And in doing that, if you happen to get gas leakage, it really is extremely effective in deflecting that gas away from your eyeball. Yeah, which is really nice. Which is nice from a comfort shooting perspective. Yeah. And when you're suppressed and you get a lot of gas in your eye, you actually start having a hard time shooting. Yeah. Your eye will start tearing and it starts becoming diff difficult to have visual acuity. Right. So that's an important thing. That sounds stupid, but it's actually valid. Yeah, there's a lot in this charging handle that, on, on the one hand, I know a lot of people are going to look at it and go, I can buy a charging handle for, what, like $12 or mm -hmm. something. Yeah. Why would I spend 100 bucks on a fancy charging handle? On the other hand, I think once you get one, you won't want to take it out. You'll That's, be like, I'm really... The, the amount of cool of, of benefit I get from this charging handle, of all things, is actually really worth that extra $75. It really is. And this is one of those components that's nuanced but important. You know what really says how much we like that? Mm. That weighs more than the standard charging handle, and we used it anyway. We <laughs> added weight by putting this on. That's a good point. We added weight a little. Added weight putting yeah. this on. And we, of course, one of the quintessential pro, uh, things we're trying to achieve with the what would stoner do is to keep the weight down. Yes, less weight, always less. But weight. we added a little weight for this. But <laughs> and, and if you it. say I'm not left-handed and I don't need ambi, I disagree with you. Um, if you are not using your rifle in ambidextrous ways in the field or in training, you are missing out. You yeah. need to do support side shooting and having ambidextrous controls on a gun, even if you're not crippled like Ian, <laughs> is important. So yeah. 
I can't say any more about it besides that we are fans of it. It is now getting the official in-range stamp of hubris approval. And uh, this is the one we're going to recommend for the What Would Stoner Do project. Definitely. If you guys enjoy watching this sort of content, uh, if you think that we bring something to the table that other channels don't, we would appreciate it. If you would take a look at our Patreon page, consider supporting us there. We are a fully viewer-supported channel. Uh, we are not monetized on YouTube whatsoever nope. uh, by our own hubristic uh, choice. Well, for, for moralistic and... Um, and some practical reasons. Yeah, it yeah. is. Yep. Um, so, at any rate, uh, if you can't support us on Patreon, we totally understand. But uh, please do subscribe to the channel on YouTube. Tell your friends about it. Uh, because we aren't monetized on YouTube, we are a lot more dependent on people sharing the content amongst themselves rather than depending on YouTube's... Uh, video promotional algorithm bots to do it for us so uh and definitely also check out the facebook page there is a lot going on on the facebook page carl you post so much on the facebook page that i can't even keep up with it we have fantastic time. discussions we have great pictures and roaring good arguments yep a lot of fun there. good so, arguments the ones that are qualified yeah. worth having yeah anyway thanks very much for watching stay tuned for the next uh the next approved part on the rifles we're getting close to having these things completely finished for you guys Thanks.